Namaste. <laughs> so it's a funny way uh, that this piece came to be written. Uh, I've been experimenting with combining Indian beats, mostly folk and classical beats, with contemporary sounds like, you know, hip hop and rock and different stuff. And nothing was quite working out until I found this German software that automatically compares two different pieces of music and synchronizes them together. So I don't have to do it manually, number one. And number two, I can browse through lots and lots of different recordings and match them to the project's tempo. So that's cool, all right. So I actually found two really good samples that went together. See, I'm teaching myself sample-based music production because, you know, I went to school for composition and I learned how to write music, actually write music on paper. <laughs> Remember that? If you don't, you're younger than I am. And uh, of course, that's a linear mode of music. But now everybody's doing loops. And so I, so I thought, well, I should learn this, you know, I should stay current with the state of the art. So I'm experimenting with all this loop based stuff, especially on my iPad. And um, that morning that I got these two pieces working well together, the grandma here of the family who's hosting me came up to me and said, Om Namo Buddhaya. And I said, Om Namo Buddhaya, yeah, yeah. And she said, it's Poya Day. Poya means full moon or new moon. Actually, nowadays they only celebrate really on full moon. But in the old days, it used to be both full moon, new moon, and the two quarters. So <laughs> to see how Buddhism has de become degraded. And, you know, the reason I got into Buddha's teaching was not because of Buddhism, because I've never been very impressed with public Buddhism, the religion, you know, and the, the orthodoxy and the kind of public face of Buddhism has never been very impressive. But uh, one time I was in Spain with a friend of mine and he had been to Thailand and started telling me about this monk in Thailand who had taught a new way of interpreting Buddha's teaching on dependent origination. I said, well, what's, what's dependent origination? And so he showed me the writings of this monk, Buddha Das Bhikkhu. And man, I was impressed. I said, whoa, this is cool. I got to learn this. So we went to Thailand. <laughs> Unfortunately, since Buddha Das passed away, uh, his followers have reverted to the uh, orthodox understanding of dependent origination, which is completely wrong, as far as I can tell. So I went to Sri Lanka and it took me two years, but I finally found a real monk who understood the suttas, the original teachings of the Buddha in the, you know, the correct way, because the language is very clear. It's the commentaries that confuse people. So the commentaries are fairly recent, only 500 years old. And before that, the Buddha's teaching was understood in a literal way, you know, just exactly what he said. So Bhikkhu Jnananda, Katukurunde Jnananda, not the other Jnananda, <laughs> although he's also um, based his teaching on the original suttas and not the commentaries. Uh, but Jnananda brought me around to the proper understanding of Buddha's teaching, 
both dependent origination and Nibbana and the jhanas or meditation states leading up to it. So that's how I got into Buddhist teaching. And it was around that time that I started this channel. Almost 10 years ago now. That's the story of how I got into it. Now I want to talk a little bit about the Sutra. Om Namo Buddhaya. Om, as you know, comes from the Vedas. And this underscores the uh, fact that Buddha's teaching actually exists and is meant to be understood in the context of the Vedas and Upanishads. Most of his early disciples were Brahmanas, Vedic priests who had been trained up in the Upanishads and who knew all the questions and the dialogues from the Upanishads and were searching for a way to realize the teachings. Because like all religious groups, the Vedic uh, Brahmanas had degenerated into a mere external religion. And because of that, the intelligent ones were searching for a realized master to teach them the correct understanding. So here comes the Buddha into this situation. And so most of his early disciples, especially Sariputta and Mogalana, uh, were great Brahmanas trained in memorization of the scriptures. And so they had very little difficulty remembering everything Buddha taught them. And later on, they became the prime sources of writing down the sutras after the Buddha passed away. Because the Buddha was so strict, he wouldn't allow anyone to take notes because it would divert their attention from his speaking. And we've read some of the Buddha suttas on here. And they're so poetic and so lyrical and so memorable, actually. Uh, if you have any knowledge of Sanskrit, they're very transparent and easy to understand. Although the suttas aren't written in Sanskrit, they're written in Pali. Pali is a synthetic language derived from Sanskrit and uh, easier to understand. It's more regular and uh, less complex in its structure. So anyone who understands Sanskrit can understand Pali very easily. So Bhikkhu Nyanananda, my teacher, was a great scholar in both languages, Pali and Sanskrit. And he had studied the Upanishads in the original language. So he was very impressive to me. And he was able to guide my understanding in the proper way. That the Buddha's teaching is meant to be understood in the context of the Vedas. So then what? Namo. Huh? Like in the beginning of all our videos, we say namaste, which is a contraction of namaha aste. That means respects. Greetings to you. And why is that? Huh? Because Aum. Aum means the self, Brahman. And everything and everyone is nothing but the self. So the world is in the self. The world is in Brahman. And Brahman is in the world. Everything and everyone is nothing but Brahman, <laughs> pure awareness. So we recognize that everyone, especially every human being, is worthy of respect as a potential self-realized being aware of Brahman. Therefore, we respect Nama Aste, uh, respects to you. Buddhaya, and in particular, the great self-realized souls who have charted the way to enlightenment 
so that all of us can reach self-realization in this very life. So that's why we say, huh? Aum Namo Buddhaya, Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum.